Right everyone, welcome back to another video for the educational side. So we're going to be running through um, blood work markers. So how a blood test would look and the printout basically of the PDF. So looking at your laboratory results and what the sort of health markers that we are looking at after a certain phase, when you're in your health phase, after like your post off season push, prep diet or competition prep, or even a normal you know, lifestyle sort type diet as well, basically. So now these will normally be assessed quite frequently across the board of the year. If you're a PD user, then you're gonna utilize them more. If you're more lifestyle, then you're gonna use them less, but they're still gonna be incorporated, um, again, because health is most priority. So these are the sort of ones. And here is my one from MediChex over um, this year, so 16th of June, this was, was taken. Um, so the main aspects that I would be looking at is mainly these types of ones. So red blood cells, white blood cells, clotting statuses, kidney health, liver health, proteins, diabetes, cholesterol statuses, iron thyroid hormones. These are the main ones to kind of be looking at. So we'll go through mine. Um, I am obviously a PD user, as probably some of you will mostly know. Um, red blood cells are basically the thickening of your, of your blood, which also helps with carrying oxygen. So looking at the, these sort of ones, so like hemoglobin, for instance, is, is telling you the marker, this is out of range, because again, a PD user, slightly elevated, and I'm creating more red blood cells, basically. So th this is the, the thickening of the blood, basically. So um, hemocrit is basically what can um, be high levels from PD usage. Uh, if it's out of range, as you can see here, which gives us a red mark. Now with this one, Hemocrit would normally mean that your, your blood is either clotting or, or is going that way, basically, which is going to risk cardiac arrest or something like that, which sounds quite daunting. But we, to do this simply, all we do is we look at bloodletting. So we have a bloodletting. This is going to reduce the amount of, uh, you know, over um, uh, amounts of blood in your body that it's producing. You're going to basically bloodlet. That's going to release the blood back out of the system. Um, and it's going to free up, basically, your hemocrit level. So that'll come back into range, which I've done recently. Um, red cell count, which is basically just a, a number that kind of combines the two. Um, all these ones, these aren't really too much to worry. They are always normally in range. These are never really out of range anyway. It's very, very rare. White blood cells, so these are normally, so this is what indicate if you've had a sickness. So if you see this is a, as a red on your markers, um, it would normally say that you have a sickness or you're, you're coming with a sickness, like a cold or something like that, because it's fighting infection. So these white blood cells would, would normally go into the red marker, so like white, white um, cell count or something like that. But they are always normally in the white, uh, the, the green, sorry. So that is one to look at. Clotting status. Again, this one is basically it's just saying how long it's going to take for your blood to clot and its ability to clot. Now, unfortunately, on my one, mine was clumped, which means um, the test result, either when they got the blood, the, the, the blood was too clumped in order to, to, to get a result, basically. So it's nothing to really worry about because we know these are normally in range. I mean, they were going in side by side in comparison with your, your red blood cells in an essence. So uh, kidney health. Now, these ones, urea and normally the EGFR is normally always in range. Very, very rare I've ever seen it out of range. Creatine, or creatinine it's called, um, is basically creatine stores within your muscle tissues. Now, if you are a gym goer, this is always gonna be out of range because it just is. It's, um, you're basically building, you're breaking down more tissue than the average person. That's what it's doing. So this is always gonna be in a red red mark. So if you ever see this red, don't be fretted. <laughs> don't be worried, it's nothing to be concerned about. Uh, liver health, so your ALP. So ALP would normally says high levels of, um, High levels of this one would normally indicate that you've got um, liver disease or certain bone dis um, disorders, basically. Um, and then your ALT is liver damage or infection. Now, these are going to be obviously elevated because of using PDs or orals. So orals are, are certain things, so like your fat burners, your um, testosterone-based orals or anything like that. These will scuff up these basically. So when you stop taking those, these ranges would normally go back to normal. So they're nothing to be worried about. But for the normal average person, these would normally be in range unless you do have uh, may have an indication of a liver disease or certain bone disorders basically or liver damage. Proteins, this is normally always in a good range, so I never really look at this one too much. Diabetes, this is normally in a good range, unless you are a diabetic or you're, you're getting diabetes or something like that, then you'll see that your, your blood glucose within your body is, is a certain range, um, and, and well, basically, so nanomill um, it's not nanomilliliters, but something like that um, for that one. Cholesterol statuses, so this is down based down to your foods, so like fat sources, so total cholesterol is always a number. Uh, and then you've got LDL, which is your low density uh, cholesterol, and then you've got HDL, which is your high density cholesterol. LDL is normally what we could convert as the, the 
bad fats and then the HDLs are the good fats basically. So high levels of, of um, LDL though um, would normally indicate that you have, I've got notes on my other screen for this one because I can always never remember quite off the top of my head, um, LDL, uh, high levels of increase in um, heart disease normally. Um, whereas the HD, H, HDL cholesterols um, would mean that you've got, it, it reduces the risk of, of heart disease, but if it's, if it's under, it would mean that you're not having enough healthy fats, basically. So maybe utilizing um, processed type fats or, or something like that. So a normal one, this is normally might be out of range because we don't normally as humans have the most healthiest of fats. So, you know, swapping things out for like avocados, sesame seed oils, um, nuts, nut butters, almond butters, um, sesame seeds, seeds, you name it, those types of fats are always a, a good, good, and eggs are always a good fat basically to get in basically. And then you'll always get a number that says like total, so like this is basically the, a number that they'll, they'll add together basically and this will always be out of range if, if this one's out of range and then this one will always be in range if this is in range basically, so yeah. Iron status, so this is one I would I would um, look at briefly, normally it's always in range unless you are deficient in iron, you would know about it because it would be under the under the scale, so therefore you would um, have to have an iron supplementation to bring it up, or you would have to have a look at um, certain food sources to bring that into range. Um, if you're over iron, which is not something I've ever come across, which is maybe you're somebody who eats a lot, a lot of red meat, then you would probably need to cut down some red meat and swap out your meat sources to, to bring down that iron status. Thyroid hormones, so you've got your TSH and then you've got your free thyroxine. Uh, these ones are normally pretty much in range. This will be, you might find this is a little bit low um, or over, so underactive or overactive, depending on if you are a PE user. Um, so if you're, at the, if you're dieting as well, your thyroid function normally lows down, so it becomes underactive and it'll come under. Um, if it starts pumping out too much and it's a little bit crazy, it might go over, so you might need to use some supplementation to bring down that, that thyroid function, basically. And then the main ones is, um, for anybody really is hormones, so estradiol and testosterone. So on a female one, you will have more than this. You'll have um, estradiol, progesterone, and uh, there's another one, I believe, uh, FSH, it might be, yeah, FSH and LH you'll have on yours. Whereas for the male one, you only have estradiol and testosterone. So you're looking at your estrogen levels, which mine was in range, and then my testosterone, which was also in range, which which was about right, because again, health phase, I brought my levels down to a TRT dosage in. Um, and I think at the time frame when I took this, this this would have indicated, because if I was taking TRT, my, I would have been slightly above this, which means it would have gone red. But because mine was in range, it means that I had debunked gear, basically, so it wasn't really effective. Um, so we should maybe go into the, the normal range, which basically was telling me I was a natural. Um, basically, an A. So those are the the, the hormones. Sorry, the, the the whole bloods that we would look at as a as a markers. So hopefully that's a bit of a breakdown for you guys to understand a little bit more. Again, if you have any questions around blood work analysis or anything like that, or if you want, um, if you've got blood work, obviously if you've got blood work, so you'll be sending them over. Um, we'll are only through videos of these as well, so you understand on your own health markers um, and how we fix those as well. If there's anything that maybe under or over, um, a bit more of an understanding.